Welcome, welcome this morning to Wayman African Methodist Episcopal Church. Welcome to our virtual worship service. Let us give thanks to the Lord for God's unfailing love and God's wonderful deeds for mankind. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Oh Lord, let us praise you as we bow before you. We humble ourselves before you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for being here with us today, Lord, we welcome you with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, Lord Jesus. May your Holy Spirit be manifested mighty, Lord, in each and every one of us. Let your spirit rain down. Let your anointing flow, Father. Let us hear your word today and not just be doers of your word, but action each and every day, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you for all that you are doing in our lives, Father. Let this worship service bring praise and glory to your name. As we wave our palms, as we wave our hands, as we stomp our feet, as we sing, as we dance, as we just worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord, this morning. We love you. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Heavenly Dove. Amen. Spirit of 
the living God fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God fall fresh on us. Mold me, make me, feel me, you Spirit of the living God, fresh for fresh. Zechariah 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. I will remove the battle chariots from Israel and the war horses from Jerusalem. I will destroy all the weapons used in battle, and your king will bring peace to the nations. His realm will stretch from sea to sea and from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. Because of the covenant I made with you, sealed with blood, I will free your prisoners from death in a waterless dungeon. Come back to the place of safety, all you prisoners who still have hope. I promise this very day that I will repay two blessings for each of your troubles. Philippians, Chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as some that to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We thank you for giving, um, for your giving. You may give through our um, website at Wayman AME Church or through the Givelify app. Um, the Wayman website is wayman slash A-M-E-C dot com. Thank you for your gifts. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, Jesus, our Savior and Holy Spirit, 
how excellent is thy name. Lord, we thank you for each and every family member on this line, Lord. We are all your children, Father. We thank you for those who could not be here today, Lord Jesus. Those who may be shut in or in the hospital or sick or whatever it may be, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the unity of our families, our children, our husbands, wives, married and unmarried, jobs and friends, just everybody, Father, grandmothers and grandfathers and uncles and aunts and cousins. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your church. Father, Lord, we want to just come to you right now and say thank you for our pastor, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for going before her, Lord Jesus, and preparing the victory, Father. Victory is on its way, Lord. We thank you, Father, so much. We look forward to it, Lord Jesus. Oh, and we continue, all of us, as we lift her up in prayer, Father. Lord, help us to continue to live in harmony and promote selflessness and truth, Lord, among ourselves to be a part of the solution. Let your love always reign over us. Wash our hearts. Open our eyes to see your wonderful gift of love each day. You, Jesus. May love, compassion, mercy, forgiveness, resources, kindness, care, understanding, and prayer be in us strong. May we survive in these uncertain days and trust you, Lord. Oh, Lord, heal all of our diseases and our broken hearts, molding us through our trials and troubles and tribulations for your glory, Lord. You shape us. Draw us closer to you as we move forward, not looking back. Oh, Lord, let our memories of our loved ones who have gone on before us give us joy, joy deep down inside. You give us each other for just a little while. So Lord, we just want to say, we love you. We give all praise and glory to you. We proclaim the victory, for we are ambassadors, saved by the blood of Jesus. We give you glory in Jesus' most precious and holy name, Lord. If there's anyone here today, Lord, that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, Lord, that you would turn their hearts, that you would change them, Lord, that they would hear what thus saith the Lord in your word. Bless, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. Today we have a privilege and special minister today, Reverend B. Elliot Renford, has been serving as chaplain at Westminster Village since October 2019. He is an ordained elder in the Free Methodist Church and has been active in ministry for nearly 30 years. He is the husband of Deborah for almost 30 years and father of two adult children, Derek and Alexandra. Preach, preacher, preach. Pray for him and lift him up. Listen to what the Lord has to say in him. After the Simonic selection, the next voice you will hear is Reverend B. Elliot Renford.
Good morning, Wayman. What a blessing and a privilege to be with you on this Palm Sunday morning. I don't have active video. If you could see, you would see the palm branches uh, that are, would welcome us into the service of our Lord on this Palm Sunday. I'm going to read from Mark's Gospel to open us up. Uh, in retrospect with the other scriptures that have been read. If you have a study Bible, it likely says something like the triumphal entry in your subtitles. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1, reads this way. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany 
at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are doing this, tell him the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway, and they untied it. And some people were standing there asked, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches that they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to talk to you this morning from the subject matter and aha moment. It's been a little more than seven years ago on March 1st, 2014, that Pastor Kyle Eidelman published his new book entitled Aha, subtitled The God Moment That Changes Everything. The acronym stands for Awakening, Honesty, and Action. And while I have appreciated Pastor Kyle's choice of definition for each letter, I believe our New Testament text offers us a slightly different outline. Philippians 2 has been read for you, and I want to look at the A from Philippians 2 and verse 5 under the subtitle, Arriving Attitude. It's, it's this familiar story that we enter into on this sixth Sunday in Lent, on the Sunday before resurrection, and starting off the week of Jesus' passion, and we find ourselves in such a place that we must be a people who continue to model what Jesus set up for us in his earthly ministry. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. If we were to pause there for just a minute, we recognize that the attitude of Jesus, not just here in the New Testament, but the foretelling of Jesus' arrival in Zechariah chapter 9, which was read for you a few minutes ago, is something that leads us to an understanding that Jesus is coming into a place where his ministry is desperately needed. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm a person who when I have desperate needs, I need a desperate response. And it can be an aha moment when I recognize that the work that God has done through his son, Jesus Christ, by his arrival into earth, not just out of John's gospel in chapter 1, verse 14, where it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, not just in the earthly ministry and the miracles that he had done up until this point where we find ourselves in Mark's gospel, but also a recognition that what Jesus did, each and every action of his earthly living was in order that the people who would follow after him could be victorious. He set us up in order for us to win, and as we follow him, we must have an arriving attitude, the same attitude that he had, the same mind that he had, and even when he was confronted by the enemy, his heart remained pure, and his actions were a reflection 
of what the father had sent him to do. I, I look at the H and AHA and talk about an honored humility. Philippians chapter two and verse three says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Verse four, each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. It, what may not be obvious in Mark's gospel in chapter 11, when Jesus sends out the two disciples to get the donkey, the colt, he says in verse three, if anyone asks you why you're doing this, tell him the Lord needs it. And there's a phrase that follows and we'll send it back here shortly. In many of the years of my ministry, I've overlooked that closing statement only to recognize that because of the political environment in Jerusalem at that time, the people would have understood that if someone came to take their animal, some governmental figure, some religious leader, that they never expected to get it back. But here's Jesus considering others and looking to their interest as well as the interest of those he's come to serve. And in an honored humility, Jesus offers himself to a people who have need of a savior. The final A and aha, I'm gonna go back to Mark's gospel. I'm gonna to refer to it this way, an acclamation accusation. You've heard the Palm Sunday story over and over again. The people who were ahead of him and those who followed him, imagine two sets of people in front of Jesus and behind him, disciples and disciples to be or shouting Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David, Hosanna in the highest. These verses from Psalm 118, verse 26, and Psalm 148, verse 1, are mashed up in the response of the people to Jesus entering into the city of Jerusalem. It's a time in which typically would have been celebrated at the Feast of Tabernacles, that there would have been a palm branch waving and shouts of acclamation. But I say acclamation, accusation, because some of those who followed him understood who he was and what he'd come to do. Some of those who followed him had yet to know who he was. And many of those here in this text would be those whose voices we'll hear at the end of the week when the passion comes into its fullness. I can't help but think about our Jewish brothers and sisters on this morning as this past Friday initiated the season of Passover. You know, the Passover feast, the celebratory reminder that a lamb was sacrificed for the sins of the people and that death would pass by the homes of those whose blood had the blood of the lamb on their doorposts. I don't know where you are in your walk this morning, but this I do know that the shout Hosanna, Lord, save us, save us now, was a cry from the people to see a change in their situation. And as Jesus came in, he was the one to whom they spoke this prayerful desire to. And the people had a need and God had provided for that need, not just in the New Testament. God had set it up in the Old Testament that there was one who would come, who would take away the sins of the world, that there was one who was on his way, whose kingdom would have no end. And there was one who would be a figurehead for the Godhead for those who would hear and believe the message that Jesus came to preach. In retrospect, I'll simply say it this way, that Jesus entered into Jerusalem to challenge the religious authorities who would later be responsible for his death 
and he would be the one who would be sacrificed for the sins of those who would see him to the end to hang on the cross. But his death would not be in vain. Jesus entered into Jerusalem and would take over the area that his enemies had claimed for their own. I'm here to remind you on this morning, Wayman AME Church, that Jesus has claimed the lives of those who would say yes to him in response to what he's come to do. I'm here to remind you on this morning that Jesus not only came to seek and to save the lost, but to pay the price and to take back from the enemy the souls and the lives of those who the enemy believed that they had authority over. My God. It's the way in which God had plans for his people. It's the request that the people had made in their festal shouts, Hosanna. It was their request for salvation from the Roman overlords. And God provided more than just salvation here on earth. He was offering them and providing for them salvation eternal as they followed after the one whom God had sent to earth on his behalf. So what do we do in this 21st century triumphal entry Palm Sunday as we move forward into the week of passion? Some of us already know the outcome of the story, but here's what I need to remind you on today. That there's been a measure of hostility that has come to the forefront of our nation, not just in this last year, but over the last 2,000 years. Most recently, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have been the target of hate and hatred. Black, indigenous people of color have suffered under the hand of the empire of the world in which we live. And our Hosanna cry is that the one who God has called and sent would be the one who would deliver us from all evil. And so, Wayman AME, the triumphal entry in this 21st century might look something like this. It might look like a demonstration for renewal that would result in riots. They might hear a statement of salvation that would result in sacrifice. And as we cry Hosanna to the same Lord of Lords and King of Kings that was cried out to in this first century, it will be an oral, an oral order that will result in an opportunity for all who say yes to receive the gift of life. Yes, life eternal through the sacrificial living of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. He's come to save us. Won't you ask him and invite him into your heart? Let's pray. Father God, I pray that these your people who have heard this message, Lord, would have their hearts moved and be drawn closer to you. I pray, oh God, this morning that you would be leading those who have yet to know you to take a position and a stance to cry out to you. And regardless of the words of the world that would desire to hold them down and keep them in bondage, set them free like never before. Today, we ask these things in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful sermon today. Thank you, Reverend Renfro. Now I would like to just open it up and ask, is there is, if there is one today that may not know the Lord as their Savior, come, come, raise your hand, and we will lead you to Christ, to be saved, to be free, to say yes to Jesus. Will there be one? Will there be one? Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, seeing that the 
whole house is saved prayerfully, Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. Say yes. Say yes.